Okay, part three of uh, painting the lion here. All right, so what I've done off camera is I've taped off the sleeves, carefully walking the tape along the shape and then taping it off really good. And then up here, which you can't see, I did it to the collar also. Again, I'm using the side cup wadi eclipse um, and I'm gonna put the side cup on because I only I'm making some custom colors so I took a, a little solo cup and I mixed up a little uh, nose color here it's kind of a uh, reds and browns and a little green green is the opposite of red and that will give you your uh, graying down of the color I'm gonna spray this a little bit um, I'm going to just tint this on lightly because I don't think I put enough green in here. There's already brown here. So the nice thing about transparent colors is they allow you to have a see-through of uh, building up layers of uh, colors instead of uh, an opaque color will block out completely. And we don't want to do that here. But I do believe this red is a little strong, so I have another mixture that I didn't think was, that I thought was too dark, and I'm just going to switch it now, I'm going to dump this out, alright, so the, the other one has more brown in it. Again, on the side here, you're going to see the paper towels on that easel, you've got to have a little test area, okay. And now I'm going to go to the darker reddish brown. Okay. There we go. It's a little darker. I'm just going to shape this a little bit. He's got a lot of freckles on his nose. I'm going to go with, they're kind of black. I'm going to go with a few of the, uh, them in this color, just in case I want to see that later, I can always go over them. Let's try here. I'm going to get too, too pink, so I'm going to have to add some brown on top of that. But right now, we've got some color going on there, and we are going to start looking for, um, I think we'll switch over to the brown try to get a little bit to the chin, which I have to uh, change the angle of the camera. I did move this the camera a little bit for you guys so that um, you can see a little more straighter on, a little more straight on. Okay, so anyway. We are looking for the brown. There it is. Okay. Uh, if you look at the, the bottle, this isn't even a big mouth bottle, it's an older one, but anyway, the, red, the ready cap, just keep that on the gun, I mean on the uh, bottle. If it's just a little plastic uh, cover that keeps it from drying up if you don't have a multi-gun setup. All right, I'm gonna take a Q-tip, I'm making a mess here. So let me just put the uh, airbrush down for a minute. Okay. It's textile paint. The shirt can be prepared uh, using a transparent, transparent extender. Especially if you're doing some, I didn't do it for this one. The nap on the t-shirt becomes very, um, just, it just becomes like pilly looking and it's not, it's not a professional look. So you want to prepare your t-shirt you know, I don't have a, uh, I have an iron that I'm just using. I don't have the heat press. You know, you use about 350 temperature. So I just use the iron right now. But if you're going to do this full time, then you want, you want the heat, you want to get the heat press. And uh, let's see, what do we need here? The brown. All right. Oh, yeah, the Q-tip. So I'm going to go right back in here. Just get in after the, uh, the heavy black that was in there. I usually wet this with a little water. 
Um, it's pretty good though. It's not, you know, it's not sitting around too many days. We have hundred and some degree temperatures, so uh, it's been very v super hot. I'm sure it is in a lot of places, at least in New Jersey. Um, anyway, it's time to get the brown on here. So we just force that in there. The eclipse holds that by the taper. You get the brown out, and then by spraying the black out. And let's start working on some more shading up in here. All right, I'm just gonna block in again some shading. Go in a little closer here. Hopefully the angle's good for you guys. I'm gonna put some brown on top of that color. The brown is transparent because I didn't put any white in the mixture. Once you put white in it, it starts going towards, you know, it goes towards opaque. If you put a lot in it, it becomes very, very opaque. So right now, you know, I'm on top of this picture. I'm gonna be careful. I can spray some orange on there. I can lighten it. I can do all kinds of things as you go. Um, let's get the shadow area over in here, man. A little black still. Come out this way. This is um, a looser, the reference picture is a very loose. Uh, it's not, it's probably a, a C, a, a computer generated image from the movie Narnia. And I'm going to use this image, change it up and make it a little bit my own because I'm, get, like I said, I'm giving this to a friend, he's a pastor, and I'm gonna put up in here uh, three crosses, the Calvary, and this represents, uh, the lion represents the lion of the tribe of Judah, which is about Jesus Christ, and uh, it's a good, good thing for a pastor. And anyway, he loves the shirt, he saw me do it before, and he, really liked it, so I offered it to him. Feather strokes, dagger strokes, so a lot of the shirt is made up of uh, these, these kind of strokes here. I did, I did not tape off the bottom like this um, because I'm gonna just be careful down there and try to not go on to the uh, actual hem of the shirt. All right, so do some more shading here. A lot more shading. Now that I have, there's your tip dry. Now that I have the uh, thing protected up there, I can start putting in larger areas that I couldn't do in the last video. Okay. same line trying to just mimic what I see a little bit of a it's a slow buildup if you go too fast you're gonna have a problem because of uh, maybe getting too dark you can't erase it it's a t-shirt so you know <laughs> you have to just work very carefully Sculpting in the different shapes here. Let's see. Here we got some color that seems a little more brown. Right, right in here. Dagger strokes. If you want to get in real close, you can take your shield, which I do not see right at the moment, so I'll just use the smaller one. Okay, you can take a shield, and this will work. Um, bigger, big shield is nice to have. 
and you can get in between some of these shapes like let's go right here and you could put the darks in with more you know protecting like this is really dark let me just really go for it it's in between the actual um, hairs that are that I, I keep saying hairs fur almost said feathers because I was doing the hawk for so long okay there's a nice orange in here that I'm going to start spraying in here Let's fill that up I can still make this my own too I don't have to uh, copy every little every little thing When you have that dagger stroke, when you have that control, you can start really working it, making things go where you want it to go. I'm going to shade off this line. So the line is real dark, which I don't have in yet. Pull away. Right. Let's see, where does that go? It goes down and around, right around here. Probably have something similar right in this area. More, this is more of a line. And this is more of just shadows, just Just uh, tinting over some of the shirt here just to give it some color. Tip dry, totally stopping the paint from flowing. I have some marks in here that I'm just going to use for direction. Once you get the uh, dagger stroke down, then you can really put some music on, something you enjoy, and um, get in a rhythm. And just after a while, you'll be like, not. When you first try to learn the dagger stroke, you'll be like, I can't do it. You know, I'm talking about brand new students. Uh, but then when you start doing the dagger stroke over and over again, then you start, then you can't not do it. You, you, you can't, I can't even demonstrate sometimes how to not do a dagger stroke. It's basically a line, you know. That's not a dagger stroke. Dagger stroke is tapering off, following through, and creating that control very controlled stroke that we definitely need. Go into the picture here and get this kind of fill it in a little bit. Okay, so what we got here? This is more of that other color. Uh, I can tint it in here a little bit. There's, there's a lot of individual hairs in here that I gotta work on. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna get pretty dark over here. Probably even with some black on top of this color. And it starts to pull the, the whole snout and jaw out. And the 
darkness around here starts to set the, you know, the three dimension that helps it appear. So let's see, here's one thing, and then here's another thing right here. It's like there's a dagger stroke here, and there's a dagger stroke here. Putting a little color around. This will actually go blacker, black over here. I'm just going to put this color in just to define his uh, form on this side. This will actually be almost like a greenish black. So I'll just put this in. See, as long as you're putting in something lighter, I'm going to put a darker color over it. You can you can do this kind of stuff. But we're, the black is going to come in here. So I don't have to waste too much paint. I just want a little, little color around. Now I'm going to lower the camera, and we're going to work on um, we're going to work on the what's my call up there lower area. So I have to get up and try to get more of the chin, just a little bit, a little bit more in. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take, let's see, what do I want to do here? i got to look at the picture. I'm going to start with a gray. I'm going to switch this brown over, flush out the, uh, flushing out, lowering this out into a paper towel. You want to keep all the overspray, especially t-shirt paint, and get really get thick and in the room and like a cloud got to just protect your lungs you know whether you wear a mask or paper mask or something and a good ventilation system that's the key you know doing these videos and teaching it's very hard to to use a mask um, it just doesn't work out too well okay you just get this right the gray that I'm using is from another company. It's actually, um, it's uh, Medea, and it's, uh, oh, I think it's a warm gray. And it's, it's just a very, I, I like the product. It, it flows like no tomorrow as far as behavior of it. So it can get like black, like in here. You can almost think I'm using black because I'm spraying it really dark over and over but the thing is it's really and truly uh, like for a black and white painting it's really great to use because most of the black and white paintings are gray tones which gives you the opportunity later to go in with your dark color and And put it in where you want it. Later. That's another project. That's another another thing to do later. <laughs> right now, I'm just going to get a little tone here. You're not going to be able to show the white on top. You have to have a color. Like if you're doing a car and you're going to do chrome wheels, you have to have some kind of a base. Then you could start putting in your highlights. So right now, there's actually colors, pretty colors in this uh, reference, green tones and things like that. Right now, I'm just gonna put in some gray. Individual strokes. Going both ways, get dagger strokes in different directions. tint this whole thing just a little bit. Uh, I really love to use the white of the t-shirt for certain things, but you can't always, you know, you got to have the opaque white in your favor so you can come back and pop things out, but you got to be careful with the white because it becomes like cement. Now I teach this and I don't, I, I'm not a uh, 
as I tell my students, I, I never worked in a t-shirt booth or at a strip mall or anything like that. I, I always had a sign shop in the art school. So doing this for my own self and for teaching, I love to do t-shirts. Doing them all day long, that's a whole nother thing, you know. Those guys that are out there are great and they know their business and they're like machines, you know, especially with the lettering. Um, as a sign painter, I uh, really could get into lettering, you know, hand lettering, make some beautiful um, fonts and stuff with the, with the sign brushes and stuff. And I, I have developed some skill with the uh, t-shirts as far as developing, you know, how to letter and stuff. But there's some people that, I mean, they just do it all day long and they're, they're phenomenal. Check out Kent Lynn. Uh, he owns a number of uh, different places that he has businesses set up and, you know, they're the kind of like the boardwalk type thing, but at malls and things. Uh, back in the day, Terry Hill. Uh, back in the day, as far as me going down to Georgia and meeting him, I was in Drew Blair's class, but when you go to a seminar like that, you can be kind of in everybody's class because they have demonstrations and stuff. And it's just great. He's phenomenal. Used to watch some videos back in the day, VHS, and develop my skills. But I really didn't develop my skills till I got in, in with the teachers that can do corrections. And in other words, in a real classroom environment, uh, videos are great. This video is helpful, but you can't. You know, even if it was a Facebook Live, you can type in questions and stuff, but. It's limited, you know, it's like, as far as what, usually my students